Hey there, folks. Welcome back to my Battle of Brandywine using GMT's Great Battles of the American Revolution. I'm currently at the second half of Turn 2. And if you remember in our last episode, we played through the British Turn 1. And that was the first half of Turn 1. The Patriots still had to make some moves. And I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, but if you also remember, I did have one more combat to fight down here. For the British during their turn, some of uh, Knipphausen's troops were engaged in this location here. And that was the Queen's Rangers. And I believe this unit right here, the 28th foot, uh, ignoring their current locations, they did fight and try and get up this hill from these two locations. They were repulsed. Uh, fortunately, the one British unit, the 28th foot, did hold position at the bottom of the hill. Uh, but the Queen's Rangers were forced back. They were the lead unit uh, in the attack. They were forced to retreat. And you'll notice also that the Queen's Rangers here are flipped to their reduced side. And that was because of an unfortunate mistake on my part. I had some overstacking here. I retreated them back into this hex. And their original strength was three. So that's seven strength points. And I caught that during turn two. So I was forced to take the loss. They were reduced and flipped and gave up a, uh, some victory point and army morale for just for that little mistake. So, yeah, there's that that happened. Uh, but like I said, the original unit, the 28th foot, remained in this position and was later on in turn two forced to retreat, which I'll get into. But the Americans all in all held their own. And if you remember, the British did take possession of the high ground. During turn one, they did gain access to the top of the hill with these two units. And that's where we left off. And this combat was resolved. And this, you remember, was a unit of light infantry that the Queen's Rangers was engaged with. This unit, I think. Uh, but we went into the Patriots' part of the turn. They basically reinforced this position. They moved up the militia. As you can see, this unit of militia is currently holding uh, their own right here by themselves. Uh, in addition, they did some shifting. If we look up top on the east side of the Brandywine River, you can see Sullivan has already begun moving some troops up on that road. Get a little zoom in. Uh, he's got Sterling under the command up there of that little group of troops. They're still within the bivouac area. They can't move out of it uh, no sooner than turn four. And even if I do leave them out of there, uh, move them out of there at turn four, I'm giving up some victory points for that. Uh, and of course, their objective is going to going to be to head north, uh, right up here to the Birmingham Hill and Birmingham Meeting House, which is an important position for the Patriots. They need to hold on that as well as Proctor's Battery position to get a decisive victory at the end of twelve turns. So I'm kind of getting myself formed up to do that, moving along the road. So hopefully when I release the army under Sullivan, uh, we'll be able to head north along that road there. Sterling will be in command. He's going to be in charge of the action over there. Uh, for Sullivan himself, he's located right down here at Rondelay Hill. And he's going to be holding the Brandywine River. He's going to be holding this flank of the American army, just as he was originally deployed and intended to do. Uh, he'll be remaining in that position. He really didn't otherwise move his troops. Uh, they're still where they originally were. I did shift a few things here and there, just minor things. Uh, on the other hand, Green's detachment over here, if you remember, they're the light blue stripe at the top of these counters. Uh, outside of Maxwell's force over here, uh, I didn't cross the Brandywine. It would give up victory points for Green to do that in turns one through three. Uh, I didn't choose to do that. I'm keeping my forces on the east side of the Brandywine at the moment. Uh, no big threats at the moment, so yeah. And they haven't really done anything over here. Again, just light shifting of troops. I think I moved this unit into place here, uh, the 5th Virginia. Strength one unit, not very strong. You'll notice this unit, the guys with the red trousers, that's the 2nd Pennsylvania Brigade. It's a strength six unit. I don't know if you can really see that. Let me zoom in just a little bit. There you can kind of see them. They got the red trousers. That's a pretty strong unit. So I'm pretty confident we're going to hold Chad's Ford. And by the way, 
this Ford right here, Chad's Ferry and Chad's Ford. These are two Fords here, which are going to grant the British easy access to the east side of the Brandywine River. That will be an objective for Knipphausen if he does manage to get himself uh, beyond this point down here. We shall see. Uh, those are some primary ferries for crossing the Brandywine. Otherwise, it's slow going crossing that baby. Uh, the secondary uh, fords are down here. There's a primary, I think, here as well. What's that called? Brennan's, Britain's Ford? I can't read it from here. But uh, it's down here, as you can see. Some light troops defend. I think there's a cannon there. And Sullivan's got control of that. So, yeah, there's been some light shifting. And as I said, going into turn two, the Patriots had initiative. And they were able to go again. And again, some minor shifting of forces, uh, especially up here with Sterling. Uh, rumors are getting hot and heavy with the British coming from the north. So, yeah, I'm kind of shifting some of Sullivan's forces and even some of Green's cavalry here are moving up from the position up here uh, to help out. I want to get more cavalry down there. It's going to be the fast, one, fastest ones to get down there to Birmingham Hill and Birmingham Meeting House. So I'm going to have a little bit of that going in that direction, too. We'll see. We'll see if Howe is on his way from the north. But in the meantime, we're going into the second half. Well, let me go to the combat phase for the Americans in turn two. Uh, nothing else really happened. They did, they, I think they did do some artillery fire here during the British turn, ineffective. Uh, the defensive fire for the British in turn two with their artillery, which was down here. With Knipphausen, as you can see, it's a strength two. Uh, it did take some shots at this position up here. Uh, it was totally ineffective, didn't do anything. Uh, and that was about it. Also during the Americans, the Patriots turn two. Uh, they did move their dragoons up. Where are they? Lady Washington's horse. So they got some horse troops there. They did move up from this location back here, shifted to a position here. Um, and I also had the militia here. So there was uh, the light infantry and militia were here, and down here there was a uh, light infantry and the dragoons. So we did have some strength here going into this combat against these two units in this stack, which includes the Royal Welsh Fusiliers and the 49th Foot, which have been successful at uh, gaining the heights of that hill. And unfortunately for the Americans... Uh, they didn't do so well against these two regiments of British foot. They were forced back. The lead unit in this combat was the Dragoons, by the way. Or the horse, I should say. Uh, they were forced to retreat. And so were all these other units. Except, believe it or not, out of the four units, they all retreated from this combat here. Except the, the militia who held their ground. And they're still in that position where I'm glad they are. Uh, basically, Maxwell, my intention down here is to just be a thorn in the side of the British, Knipphausen's troops, and just slow them down. As long as they're committing troops to, de to uh, deal with these American uh, forces here, uh, that's going to slow them down. And that works in the favor of the Americans. So we'll see what happens from that. Again, unfortunate here about the Queen's Rangers. My bad, my mistake. Uh, yeah. Other than that, that's the situation. And we're going into the British turn two, and this is what it looks like uh, so far. Now, they do get reinforcements. The Americans don't get any. Uh, the British did get reinforcements on location A, which is here, which is basically uh, the German brigade here. I forget what this was called. The second German brigade? I don't remember. It's under Stern, and he's a pretty high-ranking commander for the Germans, and a bunch of German units in here, and they're pretty strong. we got some fives and sixes, got the Leib, uh, Merbach, got a combined unit of something there, not very good morale for them, and some cannon. So there's a big force coming onto the board under Stern. Now, the, the rules for Stern, he does actually have special rules. And he has to be stacked pretty much exclusively with German units. Uh, basically, language barrier. And, of course, the British didn't uh, uh, 
have positive feelings for foreign commanders to begin with. So Knipphausen's an exception. He was fluent in English, and he was the senior German leader here in this case, I believe. And he's okay. He could uh, help command British units. But not Stern. This guy can only command uh, German units and has to be in a hex with German units exclusively. Otherwise, uh, if he's with a unit of, in a hex with the British or uh, Tory units, uh, loyalists, he cannot use his leadership. Uh, tactics can't be used and so on. So that's, you don't want him to be in there. Uh, one more thing about the Americans, Maxwell also has a special rule that's similar to that. He's located up here. Maxwell himself, he has to always end his turn if he moves with the stacked with a light infantry unit. So, yeah, he hasn't really moved. He's holding on to these breastworks at the top of this hill, this high ground. Again, to be a thorn in the side of the British. So, these guys will be coming on. Well, some artillery here. At point A. And at point B, the 3rd Brigade, I believe this, no, this is the 2nd Brigade, under Grant. And there he is right there. And as you can see, he's got a slew of units here. Nothing oversized. No big strong units in here. Uh, 55th, 10th, so on and so forth. Uh, the 40th. These guys are all coming on point B, which I decided to do at the start of the battle. This is where they were going to come on. They had three choices, and this is the one I went for. And the purpose of these guys is going to be to advance forward, and they're going to be a front line force. Grant is going to move forward from point B, and ideally, I want to get him up along this ridge line. As you can see, this high ground. Of course, that'll subject me to artillery fire the Patriots. You can see they have some cannon there. Uh, at range 3, which is the longest, but uh, they'll see over the intervening woods, because we're both on the uh, high elevations. Uh, in addition, up here, this is looking pretty tempting. This little uh, primary Ford here, which has got some rifles and a cannon and a few infantry. Not much. That's going to be something I think is be easy to deal with. I think perhaps I'll think about this. Grant will move up maybe a unit or two and engage these guys. Maybe try and force into crossing. We'll see. But his primary goal is to take position in the front. Now, as far as the Germans are concerned, I don't really want to commit them to the fighting just yet. As I talked about earlier, when it comes to my strategy, I want to have a nice strong reserve back here so when the time comes... When Howe arrives, turn 7, I want to commit them to a full all out attack, preferably up there at Chad's Ford. We're going to force a crossing, and we're going to try and take Proctor's battery. That's the goal of Knipphausen. So we're going to see how well that works, but I do want to keep those Germans uh, in reserve. That said, in turn 3, which is next, I do have some more troops uh, in reserve to come on board. Let's take a look at them. And there you can see it's going to be gray, uh, as well as a, not many, not a big force. They're twos and threes in strength. Uh, I do get some extra cannon. There's going to be quite a few cannon. I might use them right away, put them along that line to support Grant. Uh, but these guys are coming on point B, right behind the 2nd Brigade, where Gray is coming on, where I just showed you. These guys are going to follow up behind them. So I'm going to kind of use them as a support and as a reserve alongside the Germans. I also get some Tory units, this artillery, uh, some regular artillery, and the 2nd Fraser's Highlanders. That's pretty cool. Strength 5. That's a pretty potent unit. And these guys come on on point A as well which is where Knipphausen is. So you can see, in the first three turns of the game, the British are getting a lot of reinforcements from points A and B. Which, of course, is down here, as you can see. So we're getting all set up here on the west side of the Brandywine with the British and the Germans. And the Americans, uh, 
They haven't left their defensive positions. They're still formidable, uh, particularly on the right side of the screen, uh, towards the south end over here. We've got Green's forces all lined up, and he's going to actually have reinforcements coming on in that direction as well uh, in turn three, uh, the next turn. So Green himself is coming on board, and that'll be a location, I think, is up here. Right there at point E, they're coming on. So that's going to really reinforce the Patriot position. Quite a few units, like I said, including Green. Uh, and that should help defend the Brandywine Creek uh, as well as Proctor's Battery. And it will free up more of Sullivan's troops and maybe even some of the troops under Green to head towards Birmingham. Uh, the Birmingham Hill and the Birmingham Meeting House, as I showed before. So all is going according to plan for the Americans so far. I'm not getting a little out of hand here and uh, committing everything to deploying in the north. Uh, I'm trying to keep it as still within some historical semblance here. Uh, I know what I'm going to do, but I don't want to get crazy here and just pile up everything right along that area up here where Sterling is and just whoosh, come on down. Besides, it would leave this position here pretty open. So I'm going to jump into this. I'm going to see what happens as the British move into place, and then I'm going to show you guys what happens. Now, there will be probably some combat up here. I doubt there'll be any defensive fire from the Patriots regarding their artillery, except from this position. So I'll show you the results of that. And as far as the British down here, I think we're going to push forward. Like I said, we want to get these, these rebels back, drive them out of this, this whole position here. Uh, because you know what? It is turning out to be a, a thorn in my side at the moment, at least from the British perspective. So Knipphausen's going to commit so these troops that are already engaged forward. Um, and by the way, I should also point out that one of these units of light infantry did take a step loss. Uh, from the combat earlier. And, yeah, unfortunate for them. And the current army morale is right where it was before, actually. That's funny, because this did advance to this point, and this did drop down here at, at one point, but it's back up again. And that was from various little occurrences that occurred during the combat and the fighting. Uh, you yeah, know, one of which was my mistake here for the British, the Queen's Rangers. Counts as a step loss for uh, morale and victory points, among other things. All right, folks, stay tuned. I'm going to fight some combats and get these troops on the battlefield. All right, just a little quick update before I go into the combat. I just got done with movement. A uh, little crowded. I got a little bit of, didn't get where I wanted to, actually, especially with um, Stern's German brigade coming up in the rear here. Uh, but it's okay. Ideally, I wanted them on the road so they can quickly shift forward up the Chad's Ford. So at least they could cover a few extra hexes when they do actually get up there. Uh, of course, this is a pike, so it allows you to use uh, strategic movement, which is basically double your normal movement rate. Uh, otherwise, that's the only effect of the road. Uh, doesn't really affect any tactical normal movement, really. Uh, except I'm moving through all the terrain, uh, I think. Actually, I could be wrong on that. But anyway, uh, over here, the 2nd Brigade did move up. Uh, I'm relatively happy with that. Not a whole lot of progress. Grant himself has moved up along the road. And he didn't have to use strategic movement either. He just used his movement rate of 4 with this unit. He could move 6. But uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. There he is. So, yeah, I'm thinking about... Launching a little attack here and try and capture this primary fort. It could come in use down the road. We shall see. But the rest of his uh, brigade is moving up into positions as planned, including the guns, uh, currently protected by the 40th foot. One hex behind the other two regiments moving forward. Again, I want to get him up here. So we'll see. And I do have this cannon that came on board for the British as well. It kind of got in the way of things. I don't like the idea of stacking cannon all in the same hex, uh, especially when I don't have troops involved. And plus, I don't want to stack them with Stern. 
as I talked about before, that would nullify his ability to command, which really is irrelevant at this point. There's no combat that's going to go on here. Uh, but yeah. But anyway, I'm about to go into the combats, the important fun part of the game right here. I've got two units of British regulars right here. There's going to be a combat involving these guys, these guys, these guys. Knip Allison himself is at the foot of this hill with the 28th foot going up the slopes. Uh, and then we got the King's Own over here. So there's going to be a lot of fighting going on. I think I'm going to be pretty successful for the British and force these guys back. Of course, there is some Dragoons here, or horse. Uh, they're going to be able to withdraw as the defender. He can do that prior to combat. Uh, that is an option available to the Patriots. Uh, what else is going on here? Well, Ferguson's rifles are here. I think I will use them in the combat this time. They're quite effective for that and they don't have their first fire anymore. They will be able to use rifle fire, which comes up uh, after the defensive fire of the Patriots, which again, I'll show you the results of all that stuff at the end of turn two uh, for the British. And then we'll be going into turn three, which I'll probably save for the next installment to this battle. First up, let's see what happens in the combat here. All right, just finished the combat phase uh, for the British, and this is going to conclude the turn, actually. We're going to go into turn three, which I'll cover in the next part of this video. But a lot happened in this combat. It was quite, a, quite good for the British, actually. Ferguson's rifles did actually shoot. They managed to... They shot it up. This hex was previously occupied by the Dragoons and, I believe, Sims, this unit back here. And uh, Sims' unit was forced to retreat. And that was the effect of that, leaving the Dragoons all by themselves. And in the upcoming or the following close combat, the cavalry used their cavalry withdrawal. As you can see, they're marked here. So Lady Washington's horse have fallen back. And that's their current location. They're marked with a cavalry withdrawal. So they abandoned the fight. This position was taken. And kudos to Ferguson for that. Uh, in the ensuing combat, it was the Royal Welsh Fusiliers and Ferguson's assaulting the... Uh, I thought it was nobody to assault, actually. That was taken. So, yeah, Ferguson remained in place, and the Royal Welsh Fusiliers occupied the position. So there was no combat there. However, down here, Knipphausen was leading the attack up the slopes uh, with the British here. He had two units with him, the 49th. And the 28th, they were located down here. They did fight a battle against those militia, if you remember. And they were supported also by, where are they? Actually, one of the units was over here. I think the 28th was on this side. And Knipphausen was down here with the other regiment, which was the 49th. So they were attacking in this direction right here. This unit was had to fight up slope, but it doesn't count because this unit, being part of the same combat, is not fighting up slope. So that penalty didn't apply to their attack. That was nice. And they launched their attack against the militia, and they captured the enemy. So not only did they capture them, they'll gain some points for that uh, later in the battle. And they all advanced into the now vacated hex and double check they are within stacking limits six strength points Knipphausen himself is right there with them final combat was up here the king's own which were originally here fought a combat against these guys and forced them to retreat three hexes it was uh and they also advanced in the hex afterwards it was uh what is the result for that uh The AC is attacker captured. I got that before. Uh, what caused that? Oh, it was a disruption. And the enemy retreated three. He should be marked as disrupted as well, uh, which calls for one of these counters up here. If we're not to do that, he'd be marked as disrupted at this point. Yeah, so they really uh, got scared. They didn't like that, and they fell all the way back in this direction. So, the net effect of this is the British have taken the high ground and have forced the Americans off that position. Another bonus, because I scored a 10 or higher on my combat with Knipphausen, he did get a great roll, 
And by the way, all the odds up here were overwhelmingly in the favor of the British. And I think all three combats, well, the two, this one wasn't actually fought, were four to one odds, which is the best you can get. Uh, but also, Knipphausen, I think he actually scored a 10. He did get a momentum chip because of that. So that was good going for the British. They made some headway there, going according to plan so far. And prior to this combat, there was, like I mentioned, Ferguson's rifles took some shots and forced uh, Sims to withdraw, leaving the uh, horse to themselves. They did a cavalry withdrawal, not willing to stand up in the combat against them. Uh, there was some defensive fire on for the Patriots up here. This battery did take a shot at these guys down here, the Queen's Rangers. Or no, he didn't fire at them. They were lights. He shot at the King's own while they were in that position there. And it was ineffective. It did nothing. And also over here, the Patriots also took a shot at Grant's Hex. And that was the 10th Regiment. And it scored no hits. So it was totally ineffective. So that was all the combats and shooting. For turn two, and that's the end of the turn. Of course, nobody has won at this point. There will be reinforcements, as I showed earlier in this video, for both sides, including green and gray, will also be approaching from this position down here. And he'll support the reserve that I'm building up down here. Uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Turn three is next. We'll see what happens and who gets initiative. In fact, Let's do the initiative right here for you guys. Have a little suspense. Both sides roll a d10. They can use their momentum. Remember, the British have one uh, to alter these results, but they're not going to. He only has one anyway, so he's going to hold on to that. And this is modified by the morale initiative modifier that they're currently under for the army morale. High morale equals initiative plus one. So both sides basically get a plus one to their initiative die roll. And that's for having high morale, high army morale. So let's roll these. It's basically whoever rolls highest will have initiative and go first. They will be the initiative player in turn three. Well, overwhelming decision here. Seven plus one is eight. One plus one is two. The British will have initiative. And folks, as you can see up there for turn three, Right here, uh, there's going to be a lot of British coming on the board. More artillery, uh, some Fraser's Highlanders, lots of artillery for the British. Yeah, I see four batteries right there, plus Gray and his uh, brigade. I believe that's the third brigade. And, of course, Green and his big stack of troops here, a lot of threes and twos, but and one cannon. I see one battery. I don't know if there's any more. No, they're not militia. But Green himself is coming on, and they will be coming on in point E on the map, which, if you remember, is all the way up here. So, right behind his frontline forces, essentially. And by the way, this is Wayne. He's currently commanding the troops. Green is yet to arrive. And yeah, of course, Washington and Lafayette, they're all up here at the headquarters uh, monitoring events. Curious of how is coming. So there you go, folks. The British have initiative going into turn three. They've got a shed load of reinforcements arriving this turn, and so do the Patriots. Uh, of course, the British are first in this turn. Keep that in mind. And the reinforcements for the British are coming on here. And we're going to stick to our plan. So far, so good for the Brits. And uh, not much to report for the Patriots. They're still anticipating the arrival of Howe. Uh, and we'll see what happens. They're not weakening their position too much by pulling some of Sullivan's troops back the way they are, at least at this point. And they still cannot move out of the bivouac area. So give me some comments and feedback, folks. Let me know what you think, and stay tuned. I'm going to have part four next, and that's going to go into turn three, starting with the British, uh, who've gone first in turn the last two turns, turns two and three. Actually, all three turns. Uh, did I get that right?
Yeah, the British got it this turn. Turn two, I think, was actually the Patriots. Yeah, and then the British went. And they're starting turn three with the British. Yeah, so I was wrong. Turn two started with the Americans. All right, folks, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed. Leave me some comments as always. And it's a good battle. It's heating up. And we'll see you next time in this fight of Brandywine using GMT's Great Battles of the American Revolution. You guys, take care. And hang in there. It's only going to get better. Take care, folks.